Hey all, Hobby Drifter here again. This time I'm taking a look at the soul of Chogokin Daijujin, aka the Mighty Morphin Megazord. It comes in a box very reminiscent of the original Geodanger version, much like that of the Super Mini Puda. It does a good job of showing off the features of the figure, and if you were to see this on a store shelf, it'd catch your attention. If. Though, like with many figures these days, actually seeing one on a retail shelf isn't very likely. I've taken to pre-ordering just about everything on Amazon Japan, since most stuff I want ends up selling out within an hour of going on sale. Inside the box, everything's secured nicely in a deep styrofoam tray. Again, very similar to the layout of the 90s version. Since this is coming on the heels of the Voltron slash Golion SoC, I couldn't help be a bit disappointed with how few accessories there are. I mean, yeah, obviously the Megazord didn't have a whole lot of accessories in the first place, and it took me a while to think of what they even could have included, but since this guy commands the same price as the overwhelmingly accessory-laden Voltron, it was, it was just a bit of a downer. Um, I think a clear stand for the Pteranodon would have been nice, or an energy effect for the Godhorn slash Power Sword. But let me talk a bit about the Zord slash Guardian. Okay, sorry. I, I don't want to keep doing the Geodanger slash Power Ranger thing for every bit of this. So I'm going to stick to the Power Ranger names for stuff since I'm doing this review in English. Um, if I go back and record a Japanese version, I'll use the Geodanger names. So, the Zords. <laughs> the Zords look great. The Mastodon has a few foldable flaps that hide some of the Megazord bits, and also has an articulated trunk, which allows for more accurate posing in the various modes. The Pterodactyl gets the short end of the stick in this set, because there's simply not that much to it. It's why I really would have liked a stand to have been included to help pose this thing. I mean, it's not like buying one separately is a big deal, but for a figure that retails for like $300, it would have been nice. That's all I'm saying. Also, the beak on the Zord is super pointy. The Triceratops is the Zord that surprised me the most. Not only does it have chains behind each of the horns, but the body can be expanded outward to give it a more show-accurate wideness. It also has sculpted feet near the tank treads, uh, the chains, though, they are impossibly thin, and I'm forever afraid of accidentally snapping them. So, once this video's done, I doubt they'll ever be out again. The Sabertooth Tiger Zord is perfectly fine. Um, it's not much to say about it. It features a more articulated body and limbs than any previous version. Um, not articulated to the level of the Yellow Lion in the Voltron set, but... It's a real improvement over prior incarnations. And now, the Tyrannosaurus. I mentioned that the Triceratops is the one that surprised me the most, but that's just because I knew the Tyrannosaurus was going to be great. This is where it's at, folks. Everything moves on this guy. The mouth opens to show off a molded cannon rather than just a sticker. The arms and hands move every which way. The tail has articulation in each of the joints. The legs have a wide range of motion, especially at the hips. It's excellent. I'd also like to take this moment to point out that the instruction manual follows the TV show combination down to the letter. So assembling the Megazord via the instructions is exactly the same as the on-screen version. And that's just a really nice touch. The tank mode. The tank mode looks great, although it doesn't roll. I can't be sure, but I would guess this is because there are fewer people who'd get any real use out of a rolling tank mode than would be pissed if their $300 toy rolled off the shelf during one of Japan's many minor earthquakes. Also, getting the mastodon head and pterodactyl body in place is a bit fiddly, but once you do get it, they stay on securely. I really like this mode, and I always have. Even as a kid, the appeal of a tank made of robot dinosaurs was undeniable. 
but the mode that brings all the fans to the yard is the combined form, the mighty Megazord. And this mode looks great. The proportions are, in my opinion, the exact right balance of the on-screen and original toy versions. However, getting there means that some sacrifices needed to be made in terms of articulation. This guy isn't as articulated as some previous SOC figures were. But, and this is just my opinion, but since it's based on a guy in a rubber suit rather than an anime robot, I'd say it's articulated enough. Enough to recreate most of the poses of the Megazord on the show, anyway. The Power Sword is very nicely detailed, although I'm a bit concerned for the long-term health of all that chrome. And speaking of chrome, we come to my biggest issue with the set. The mirrored chrome on the Megazord's chest. I just, I find it distracting. I would have greatly preferred if Bandai had just gone for a flat gray here. And come to think of it, I'd have been alright with that on the Power Sword as well. Although, I get that keeping that mostly chromed was a throwback to the original version of the toy in the early 90s. So yeah, that's the SOC Megazord slash Daijujin. One last time. Is it the nicest version of the character ever released in toy form? Yeah, without a doubt. Is it perfect? Well, no. Is it worth $300? That's completely up to you. $300 can buy a lot of other Power Rangers stuff. Or a lot of anything, really. Personally, I'm happy with the purchase. In between this, the Tamashi Lab Jiu Soken, the Artisan Bucklers, and the Figure Arts Rangers, I finally got, as an adult, a collection I could only dream of as a kid. Thanks for watching, take care, and happy hobbying.